Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated, continuing on with my Frankie Donovan run. Just barely. Uh, he was nearly killed in the last episode in our dramatic fight with uh, Maggie Dyer. So we just made it out of that alive. She didn't. And we have our mission to acquire any large brewery or to specifically take one from arena now what i haven't done yet i was looking at the factions there is one minor faction that has a large building it's not a brewery what i might do is wander into near north side i still haven't gone in there it's the fourth area on the map i haven't gone there yet so what i'm going to do is I'm going to get the gang. And we're going to come over to near north side. I'm going to get a taxi. And we're going to take a look at the world. So here we are. In near north side. I'd forgotten where we were for a second. Already. Look at this. Dino Banyan. Right away. We're slap bang in the middle of... The territory belonging to a minor faction. Keenan's Night Machine. It might be interesting. They're, they're actually uh, offering us a trade. I was just about to say it might be interesting to attack them. Uh, to take that uh, this region here and establish a foothold for ourselves. They want, what, 200 um, rack... I have 285, I'm producing 66. Sure, sounds like a deal. More large buildings belonging to O'Banion. And sure, no wonder he has money to be paying us with all these big fancy buildings. Uh, he is requesting protection. Sure. He sure is a swell fellow. Well, look, we knew what was going to happen. After some time working together, Cyril McRae has fallen in love with Nora, old country queen. I don't know what your father is going to say about that. So the phrase used in the game is that they're in love. But that relationship isn't always meant to be taken as romantic if you go into the... Um, the, the Black Book, the, the list, list of gang members, it's not always uh, taken to be a romantic relationship. But uh, possibly it is in this case, who knows? We're getting a lot of middle fingers and broken broken hearts, I'm not too sure what's going on here. The fact that Cyril McRae's love interest, Nora Quinn, now has feelings for Ray Monks, has driven Cyril into a jealous rage. Cyril will attempt to kill Ray if he sees him, that's right. Um, Nora is in love with Ray Monks. Uh, who is one of the one of the characters. Now, what I'm actually doing at the moment, I'm just wandering around the place. I'm going to have to head down here to these poor thugs because I'm losing loyalty with Jez because she hasn't been in a fight for a while. Um, Clyde must be absolutely going mad because he's only been lying in bed. It's already done. We're going to have to attack these two guys. They don't have a, a crate with them, but uh, yeah. That's, that's Jez for you. You will... Oh, it's still his turn. And Jez, should we give a go with that? That's what I'm oh, fucking talking about. I'll keep her happy a while. Saltus is getting big silly notions. He is no longer paying protection money to us. Our business arrangement has broken down. I wonder if this is a prelude to war. Uh, what's this question mark over here? Oh, that's one of, um, that's actually one of Soltis's gangs. Nora has decided to give up. 
from what I can see. Now he wants a non-aggression pact. You think I'm an idiot? Go away out of that. Nora got distracted by something. Uh, Dino Banyan wants a sit down. I think you should end your business arrangement with the Janas. We'll go to the sit down anyway, but I'm not too sure. We'll see what he'll give us. We'll see what he'll give us. Oh, look, it's right here. That's handy. That's. Let's go and see what he has to say. I don't like how close you've gotten to that boss and their faction. I want you to break off your business arrangement with them. So, a number of crime families had joint ownership, or a number of uh, criminals had joint ownership of a casino called the Ship Casino. And at a meeting, uh, Al Capone, I think, informed them that, um, I think it was Angelo Jaina, it was one of the Jainas, I swear it was Angelo. Jesus, that brooch, I'd forgotten all about that brooch, oh mother of God. Sorry, um, I think it was Angela Jaino had ran up $30,000 in losses at the casino. And Capone suggested that the the debt be forgotten about. And everybody was on board except for Dean O'Banion. O'Banion said, no, he has to pay up. So O'Banion did not play well with the, uh, with the, other, with the other groups. Eventually he would basically frame uh, Big Papa John Torrio, who had divided Chicago amongst all of the different factions. It was Torrio who invited Capone from New York uh, to Chicago. And um, O'Banion basically frames him, um, kind of frames him, sets him up to get arrested. And uh, that, was, that was the last straw then for a number of people, including Capone. And they eventually had him killed in uh, late 1924. So this is this is quite interesting, his hatred for the Janas. Sure look for now. For now. There'll be some bit of unity amongst the Irish. We will have to drive him out of Fulton Market though, you see, I don't know what to do. Uh, at this point in time now it's it's pretty much just turning into a kind of a a steamroller. Just go to war with everyone. And is there any point in in agreeing to this? Is there any point in agreeing to any of this, really? Um, we'll see what the offer is. We'll see what the offer is. I could consider it, if the offer was right. I can give you cash. Take it or leave it. I do like cash. Sure, go on. Go on. Sure. Sounds like a deal. Good. Your business arrangement with them is over. It is. See you around. So we've just broken our agreement with the Jaina crime family. However, they are still inviting us to a war against the Saltus gang. Absolutely, we'll, we'll go to war with Saltus. They know where his safe house is. They're telling us where the safe house is. What will we take from Saltus? What will we take from Saltus? Um, it's a pity it doesn't tell you what size these things are, because I would like to take a large brewery, but I don't know how... I don't actually know what size that thing is. Um, sure, Gary's Gamble House. The Rusty Nail. And we take anything else? We're going to just end up taking things anyway, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, where where am I? No, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Near north side, and... Oh, actually, yeah, they're both here. Sure. So we're now at war with Saltus. I'd better pause quickly, just the way we see where he actually is. There's available racket. There's Gary's Gamble House, which we have uh, declared that we want. And there's something else up here that we want as well. We might... I don't know what we'll do. I'm just, I'm just wandering around. Lads, I'm just out for a walk. I just want to see the neighborhood. See what's going on. See if there are any of these guys that I've missed that have interesting crates, but it doesn't look like it. So it looks like Reina is also at war with Saltus. This building is marked by the Janas. Now I don't mean I don't know does that mean that they're they've decided that they want it. But well, I'm gonna try and take it. I've actually come back to um Where the hell are we? 
I know this won't kill him, but I'm going to do it anyway. We're back to uh, to Fulton Market. I'm going to break your face in. <laughs> and we're okay. going to see how many of uh, Soltus's rackets here we can take. Then we have Jez. See, she's lifting, lifting the right leg off the ground. She's. That's why you missed. That's why you missed. You need to plant. You need to plant. She's following. She. I won't say she's following through. She's kind of spinning around and she's losing all momentum. Uh, here's here is Eddie. Oh, he had the he had the um, dire straits. I think this is his first shot with dire straits. Look at that! Look at that for a, a weapon. Yes. Victory. No money, no nothing. I was gonna. Sure, I marked the target. I don't know what that means. I'm on it. So we could now be fighting for buildings that are actually earmarked by uh, by other gangsters. We as might as well fight. Or why not? You bastards. Well, Frankie. I'm on it. I'm going to break your face in. <laughs> and he has taken out the revolver. So if we can get... Oh, just not enough. Actually, can he move? He can. He's still not going to get line of sight, but it doesn't make a difference. Shit. Oh, we'll have to bring her to there. Overwatch isn't great. Nora won't be able to shoot thin with it. God damn it. Gotcha. So it's two AP to uh to use that. Cyril, good man. Well done. Cyril does not have great range of motion. I wonder is it because of the Thompson? I'm gonna step on you. Oh no! Flashbacks, Frankie, to the last combat. Uh, so Frankie's tired. And he's a survivor. Oh dear god. We know that only too well. I don't know, we'll have to work on that technique. I don't know. She has another. I'm not entirely too sure how that works. Yeah, yeah. that's what oh, I'm fucking talking about. Good day. That's how you feed me. Very nice. The SMLE. Short. Magazine Lee Enfield. Not short magazine. Short. Magazine. Magazine. Lee Enfield. Uh, so these would have been very prominent weapons without the scope, uh, the scoper, without the scope during the the War of Independence. Uh, commonly issued to the. There you go. Used by the British Empire during the war. That'd be the First World War. But um, these would have been the main issued weapons during to the British Army. The the RIC actually had their own special Lee Enfield, um, an RIC carbine. Which would have been very common. So these weapons would basically have been taken by the IRA and then used um, by them in future ambushes. So there you go. We're probably going to give that to, to Nora. 
It'd be great if there was an actual Lee Enfield. I know there's the 1917, but uh, basically if there was this without the uh, without the, the scope on it. So that's quite nice. Oh, I don't have to click on it. I just click this. So it looks like we can take it over. I wasn't even expecting that. Uh, we will keep it as a brothel. Confirm. So I am beginning to run low on... On names for everything. And I'm also kind of getting... I won't say tired of, of naming all the buildings, but... From here on in, it is very much just... just Battle, battle, battle. Building, building, building. I think one of the, uh, the minor objectives is to get 50 rackets... So it's just accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. Kind of like um, Inish Free for a speakeasy. I'm going to call this brothel Carrick Fergus because it uh, references the opening line. Well, there's a song called Carrick Fergus, and the opening line of the song is I wish I was in Carrick Fergus. I think, uh, I think Carrick Fergus is the name of one of the girls who works here. <clears throat> Good man, Angelo. Angelo knows where things stand. Uh, he's going to keep up his payments. He'd like to extend it for another six months instead of like Saltus, who abandoned his payments, broke the treaty, and then tried to form a non-aggression pact. The silly old fool. So, yes, do keep giving me money. We're down at the southern tip of Fulton Market. Here is Maud's Dong. The hills of Connemara. There's Know Your Worth. Land centers. And I'm not going to have time to do it now, but we are around to the side of one of their... Okay. They didn't, they didn't realize I'm here. Here is another brothel. Saltus loves his brothels, bless him. We'll... Come right to here, and we will wreck that lead with his umbrella. We will shower the umbrella in blood. A Gavar 98, uh, often erroneously believed to have been on board the... Oh, I'm trying to think, the Asgard. So a number of weapons were bought into Ireland by Erskine Childers and others in... 1914, I'm trying to think, for the Irish Volunteers. And uh, it's often erroneously believed that they were Gavar 98s. The Ulster Volunteer Force had managed to get Gavar 88s from the Germans. And I think what the Volunteers got were something like Gavar 71s. They were even older still. Uh, but this is uh, this is a weapon, like I said, erroneously believed. So the the Irish volunteers were looking for weapons. Basically, as a bit of a kind of a propaganda coup, more so than anything. So they they didn't care what quality they were. So the fact that they were crappy old weapons, twenty years out of date at this stage, thirty years out, of, forty years out of date at this stage, if I'm if I'm correct, uh, didn't really uh, matter much to them. But you'll you'll often hear people saying that it was it was these weapons that were um, on board the Asgard. It wasn't. But look at this, we're getting we're getting all the, the Irish uh, 1916 and War of Independence weapons. There is one handgun that I have been desperately searching for. I've been hoping that it would pop up. It's uh, a very prominent weapon in the War of Independence especially. Also in the 1916 Rising, but uh, we haven't gotten that yet. So we've seen Lee Infields, we've seen Gavars, we've seen the Tommy Gun, which like I said had some bit of... Um, Involvement in the War of Independence, and we've seen the 38 calibers. I don't think there are any 45 caliber weapons. I'm not too sure. We'll take this loot. We'll take this loot, and we'll go in, and we'll take another brothel. Maybe they'll have what I'm looking for. It, weapons, <coughs> weapons. Oh, Saltus, you poor man. You don't have you don't have much going on in here. Okay then. I'm gonna <coughs> batter you. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm fucking talking about. Victory. <laughs> Swell. Well, take the loot. We could smash this place up. Or ransack it, I mean to say. We could ransack it and try and get some... 
stuff from it, but then again, I do eventually want to take over this neighborhood. You know what, we might as well ransack it, we might as well ransack it. We will confirm. 71 quid, not... Not great. Uh, you'll also see that I'm down two thousand dollars. They're too busy. Oh yeah, I, I marked that building just because I wasn't too sure what uh, what it actually means. I've lost two thousand dollars because I managed to buy on the black market. I managed to buy some armor, and I gave that to Eddie. I will confirm for Jez. Poison tipped blade. Your thrown weapons are now coated with poison. Ah yeah, ah yeah, absolutely. I'm not even. I will look. Lightfooted no longer trigger overshot. Or overwatch, I mean. Uh, low profile. Uh, keeping a low profile. Jez Murphy. Shouting her head off. Capable of keeping a low profile. That's class, lads. I'd say now, 200 days. It'll be a while before we see that. So we're going to hop around the corner. I probably had them all selected. We're going to hop around the corner. Right away. Oh, I forgot. I didn't even spot that person. Will they stop us? Will they actually even... They will. That's what I'm yeah. fucking talking about. Oh, happy Victory. Day. Nora is still heartbroken over something. Uh, what have we here? Saltus gang are attacking your guards outside. Awesome wave blues in Fulton Market. Oh, that is the worst place to attack. I have so many places around there. I think awesome wave blues is right next door to um, to the safe house that we took from uh, from Maggie Dyer. We'll auto resolve. One hundred and sixty-two. Of course. Is this another brothel? A brothel named Available Racket Building. I could auto-resolve a lot of these fights, but you know... For as repetitive as they are, and for as much as I complain about them, do you know what? They're great old fun. They're great old fun. In your face, you fucking gobshite. I still haven't checked out how the hell Eddie is running so far around the place. That's what I'm oh, fucking yeah. talking about. Victory. Cool. We'll take the loot. Do you know what? We will ransack this as well. Okay, 292. Oh, that doesn't look good. Um Forbidden Fruit in near Southside. So I'd say this is one of the ones that we took from Maggie Dyer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna auto resolve that one. That's not gonna end up well. And I'm gonna pause very quickly and see where that is and see if I can see any other of Saltus's gangs wandering around the streets anywhere. So down in near Southside, there is Forbidden Fruit. There is a sizable contingent outside the door they're going to head in there and take it and there is no taxi rank anywhere nearby what i'm going to do instead is i'm getting confused between um reina's colors and uh saltus's colors i also don't see any large breweries i don't see any breweries full stop owned by saltus so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my guys to here. And we're going to head across the road. And I think I'm going to take and actually um, uh, take over this. The speakeasy. It'll it'll replace the speakeasy that they're about to take off of me. Um. So what's his name? Jaina must have taken Gary's Gamble House. We will take it over. So I was indecisive there as to what I was going to do with this building. 
uh, keep it as a casino or rename it. I'm going to keep it as, as a casino or keep it as a casino or change it is what I meant to say. I'm going to keep it as a casino. I'm going to call it Look of the Irish. Americans tend to associate Look of the Irish with um, pots of gold and shamrocks and leprechauns and rainbows. In Ireland, we consider this to be a curse. If you wish somebody the uh, the look of the Irish, you're wishing them bad luck. Considering the course of Irish history over the past few centuries. Where this comes from originally, I believe, is in the gold rushes in, um, in the 1800s. Which included quite a lot of Irish people striking it rich. A lot of people put this down to kind of beginner's look. They regarded the Irish as not being very well skilled or educated in mining and the fact that they were striking it rich. It was the look of the Irish. So it's kind of a, a not a derogatory term, but it's not a, a term of endearment. So we're going to blame the look of the Irish if anyone strikes it rich in our casino. Uh, so we will say okay to that. Now, our notoriety has hit 500, which actually means I can assign an underboss and I think the best person to assign for it is currently lying in bed. So I might wait until Clyde comes back to us. Uh, Chinatown has gone from bustling to booming. They now prefer whiskey. Oh lord. So I think we might have a tiny bit of whiskey. At the moment what I'm doing is feeding them swill. Utter swill. Because I just have so much of it and I want to get rid of it. Oh my god, I still have 800. That is absolutely atrocious. I think we're just feeding everyone swill. That near north side is consuming one swill. You see, we don't have a lot of whiskey. We put them... Um... There, they can have Cyril's Daz whiskey. That'll keep them happy. Right. There's no, there's no going home for Christmas. Nobody gets Christmas or New Year's off. We are spending our time attacking... Take that, you fucking gobshite. What is this? Is this another brothel? At this stage, I don't even know. Oh, well, Frankie will hopefully help some people... ...get new skills. He's poisoned. We'll have Nora, who I've changed to the SMLE. It's a terror when you're that bad a shot that you need to use a sniper rifle outside um oh yeah he's gone into forbidden fruit we don't have oh man we've one melee we'll try and fight it we'll make we'll make a determined uh, stand we'll see how it goes gonna mess you up that's an interesting choice <laughs> Oh, you can run past people if they block the door. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I wonder... Mm, okay, right. Delay her turn until the end of the round. This guy is bleeding. Can't move very far. That was a good attempt. It was a good attempt. I'll insist that much. I don't think we're going to get his... Well, no. He's dead now anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. I'd say she's gone. We've lost forbidden fruit. Oh, no. Now 
I'm mad. Okay. Where are they all hiding? Where are they all hiding? Eddie, what are you doing? Are you just chasing down random people? Somebody way over there. There's two of them behind the bar. They have the bar well defended. Where is the other person? Oh, they're over there. Okay. Wait, you can go up there and hit them. Okay, if you can hit them from there, far away. Right away. Come here to me. Oh, boys. <laughs> from an elevated position and all, after getting 50 kills with melee weapons, Frankie Donovan has been awarded the Mean Streak trait. He's had that now for a while, I'd say. 96 to hit, still. So that's what you get for up and up in the melee. Wow, that is some range. Okay. And she's bleeding. I'm going. Eddie. So Eddie might be able to shoot whoever's behind the bar. He can, so I mean, what's the point of a sniper rifle? Other than when you are when you are in exceptionally large buildings. We'll skip. We have Nora. And Nora might very well be able to take her out. Then again, the only problem now is that Cyril has has nothing. Poor old Cyril. Run and gun. Once activated, you can perform a max move action and still perform another action afterwards. Now, when you say another action... Um... Okay, I have to do that. I'm going to get into there. Now, when you say another action, does that also include an Overwatch? It does. Moving in. So there is Frankie. Well. Look at this for a day. They're all congratulating you, Frankie. Look at this for a day for uh, Frankie. His 50th kill with the come on. His 25th kill with the handguns. Uh, it does tell you how many kills each of them have been getting. So we will... Um, we'll say okay. Um, take the loot. I'm getting half confused. Take over. So they took a speakeasy from me. We'll take this speakeasy from them. I think it was a speakeasy. I do have a handful more speakeasy names. We are kind of running out, but uh, I decided, you know what? That was the first building that's been taken off of me. So I don't think I don't think I've lost any other rackets uh, this game. So screw you, Saltus. I've actually seen it said somewhere that the uh, his name is most commonly spelled S O L T I S, but I forgot. Just while we're here, we will take a look at Frankie. Dear God, that brooch, Donovan. Thirst for violence plus ten melee when using melee weapons. Uh, invigorating kill, recover twenty HP after killing an enemy with a melee attack, and mean streak. Plus 25% chance to apply status effects when using melee weapons. Are you telling me that it's possible that, that Frankie could now bait somebody across the head with the come on? And if it doesn't kill them, it might at the very least poison them? My god, a poison come on. 
Uh, he has plus 10 marksmanship when using handguns and 10% chance to crit when using handguns at close range. Okay, interesting. And where is... Where is... There's that galoot. When's he back to us? Does it tell us when he's back? 40 more days. This is who I'm looking for. Um... So, gut shot. What's this? No, this is strike and move. Killing a target grants you a free bonus move. There you go. That's how That's how he's been uh, moving after he kills people. Right. That explains everything. We're just out the door of Screw You Saltus. We can see over there is a brewery that belongs to Saltus. There is... Oh my god, he's converted it into a brothel. God, he loves his brothels. This man absolutely loves his brothels. We're going to get a taxi from Screw You Saltus to the back arse of nowhere. Oh, we can't. That's a pity. I was hoping we could. We're just going to run off in this direction. Um, the Jennas have taken this building. I don't see any other kind of handy spots that we could attack. Meet the people. It's all over the tabloids. A human foot arrived in a meat delivery to a butcher's shop in West Loop Gate. It's only a matter of time until the cops trace it back to a slaughterhouse in Fulton Market, where you and your crew have taken to disposing of a few animals of your own. Filthy animals, could you say? Burn down the factory. We can call it a barbecue. 50% chance that leadership and notoriety go up. 50% chance that some crew get shell shock. Crew morale will go down, but notoriety still goes up. Uh, I'm not worried. More dead gangsters go through there than Jackson's funeral parlor. Probably not even one of mine. 60% chance that leadership goes down, notoriety goes up. 50% uh, chance you get the cam trait. Doesn't tell you what cam is. And then if we were cunning, we could kill the idiot on my crew who's responsible and leave him there for the cops to find. I do like that one. Shell shock, though. You see, I don't know I don't know what that is. I don't know how long does it last. Is it permanent? Um here. 60% chance that we get leadership minus three. 50% chance, so they're independent. We'll go with this one. We'll see what happens. So leadership has gone down. Uh, the cops come by and question you. And they push hard. It seems they have something connecting you to the foot. A leg? They might get... Uh, they might get out of your hair for the right price. Give them two grand to protect and serve. Leadership goes back up. Or feck them. They'll get bored. Cops have no attention span. Raid increase in rackets. We haven't seen any raids as yet. We're making a ton of money. Do you know what? I'll just shut them. I'll shut them if there's any chance of a raid. They won't be finding no more foots nowhere. So we're going to continue up in this direction. I'm also watching. I am watching. I am watching. I think we're going to be taking on this, uh, this battle as it is. Oh, they're spread out in a mad old crazy direction. Happy New Year! It's 1921! May old acquaintance be... Forgot. Taking out the trash! So Frankie Donovan has come around to wish everybody a Happy New Year. With a come on to the face. Would have probably made more sense to have had him move in behind the car and then do that. Um, so Nora, then of course, doesn't have a line of sight. Oh, Cyril. Cyril. 
does not have a great range of motion. I'm not too sure where that's coming from. Now, can we get a kill off for Eddie? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm fucking talking Victory. about. The Grand Villa Casino, we will fight. Got him. I should start keeping an account of how many battles we're actually going through. Where are the awkward people? So there's a guy that it's going to take us a while to get to. Oh, we can't reach him. We can't reach him. That is an absolute terror. Here is somebody around the corner, but Jez could get to them. Oh, Frankie. Oh, merciful hour. That's a bad start to the day. Am I right in saying that we'll be able to... Force that up there. Never mind. And then uh, do this. Uh, so it is in cover there. I have a feeling that person is going to have to come out of there. There is Nora. My god, that that slot machine is the greatest defensive position ever. If they just had that in the First World War and, and strapped it onto themselves. Um, wants to kill Ray Monks. If left alone with their target, this person may attempt to kill them. Cyril, you're desperate. I'm coming for you. No, you're not. Okay, no, he is. Never mind, sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Oh, well done. So we could just leave that guy to Eddie. It'd be great if we could just get closer by uh, bathering one of these uh, civilians. How the hell do I change weapons? had her get closer to um, to the person behind the invincible machine up here. Uh, he's grand up where he is. And Nora. That's what I'm yeah. fucking talking about. Oh, happy Victory! Day. Yeah, we got ourselves a shotgun. We'll take it over anyway and we'll see we'll see about turning it into something else. Um Yeah, do you know what? We leave it as an El Casino. So I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel here, trying to, uh, to come up with names for casinos. I'm going to go with the Irish Hospitals Sweepstakes. Uh, this was a, a lotto formed in the aftermath of uh, Irish independence, or the creation of the Irish Free State. And it was used for the financing of hospitals throughout the country. But uh, it was involved in 
It was a major scandal, and major figures in Irish society were involved. So, who knows? Some major figures in Irish society might be involved in the scandals going on here as well. So I think his brewery across the street has um, has gotten a new guard. They've they've hired somebody since we went into the building. I'm going to ambush them. I'm not going to enter the building. I'm on it. Come here to me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, now. Yeah. Nice. The reason that I did this was the way a battle wouldn't break out when I do what I'm about to do. We have $16,997 because we're going to hire somebody. And if they hired up here and came down to us, uh, that just, it would have looked weird. There would have been a, a weird old battle. And we are finally... Finally, what a day! What a day for Ireland! We're finally going to hire Frank McCurlin. Hey. Frank is a fascinating character. Uh, it looks like when Dino Benyon fell out with uh, with Torio, he decided to kind of set up Torio, get him arrested, and to to O'Banion, this was kind of a prank. So he skipped town because he knew a lot of people were angry with him, but you know, he skipped town to let them cool off. Now, of course, when he came back to town, they were all uh, still determined to kill him. But he went to a friend of his who was a, a rancher, I think in Denver. And there he saw adverts that were being um, aimed at ranchers, those in the, the ranching industry. Why? This was being targeted at ranchers, I'm not so sure. Advertisements for Thompson submachine guns. Do you have a vermin problem? Rats running around your farm? Get a Thompson. Is there a cow dung in the yard? Shoot it away with a Thompson submachine gun. So he is supposed to have purchased a consignment of Thompsons. And when he was when he returned to Chicago and, and was killed shortly afterwards, um, these were divided out amongst a number of people. And somehow, I'm not too sure how, but uh, McCurlin is supposed to, this is what legend says, McCurlin is supposed to have gotten his hands on one of these Thompsons. Now, McCurlin, in the aftermath of O'Banion's death, you're going to have these two kind of factions. Uh, one coalesces around Al Capone. I suppose you could say that one of them kind of coalesces around... Uh, Bugs Moran to a degree. McCurlin backs Capone. He's one of a, only a handful of Irish or Irish-American uh, figures to kind of go over to, uh, to Capone's side or to stay on Capone's side. So I'm not too sure what he'd be doing with one of these, how he would have gotten one of these uh, Thompsons. But um, as I said, famously, McCurlin uses one of these weapons to try to kill um, Spike O'Donnell on the 25th of September, 1925. And this is kind of regarded as the first use of a Thompson. There's another attack shortly afterwards, again, by McCurlin. And this is what causes a lot of people to sit up and kind of notice, wow, we could do something with these weapons. So that's uh, that's how the Thompson becomes such a, a famous part of gangster lore. Frank, welcome to the gang. <laughs> Point me at what needs killing. The, um... What does he have? Mark Target. Uh, Mark Target. Guile. Run and gun or gut shot. You know, we'll give you the run and gun. It's doing well for Cyril at the moment. <laughs> How about it? He's delighted. Very happy. So he has a common 1921. Uh, what could we give him? We do have some rare Tommy guns, and we have a rare 1921. I don't know, I still haven't come to the conclusion as to which of the two of these is better. Uh, this one does more damage, but has a smaller clip size. I haven't been getting to use the sweep very often, so I think we'll go with the M1921 Thompson. And I do love the description that uh, TJ English has in his history of the Irish-American gangster. 
of Frank McCarlin. He says that McCarlin was described as get crazy because of the orgasmic joy he exhibited when using his machine gun. So we might get to see some of that in uh, in the next episode. Now, very quickly, if we come and take a look, because I don't want to, I don't want to spend half an hour talking about this. Uh, I probably will, though. Who's next? Now that we've hired Frank McCarlin, who's next? We know that Dale Mahan, Nora won't work with Dale. She hates Dale and loves Ray. Uh, Dale hates Ray, and Ray loves Nora, just like Nora loves Ray. But now, also, actually, <gasps> Cyril hates Ray, and Ray hates Cyril. My God, this is this is going mad. So Dale Mahan uh, won't. I don't think we can hire him as long as we have Nora. I'd say if we hire him, Nora will leave, so we're going to have to hold on a while. The other person then is Chris Paul Gregson, uh, who will not work with, um, with... What's his name? Clyde. And the only other remaining character that we know for definite is... Where's she gone to? Natalie Warren. Dr. Natalie Warren. 63,000. Oh, boys. That's going to take a while to get to... Now, there is one other person, though. And that is... Hey, what's up? George Bugs Moran. Now, he has an Irish surname, but that means absolutely nothing. It is an assumed name. That would be quite common for gangsters to take uh, Irish or Irish-sounding surnames for a, ver a variety of different reasons. So he's he's done the, uh, the, the, um, yeah, the Stephen Colbert thing. Of putting a fancy French accent on his name, calling himself Stephen Colbert. If you look online, it'll tell you that uh, that Moran was of that his parents were French or French Canadian. That's what it says on Wikipedia. Other sources will tell you that his parents were Polish, but in Paddywhacked, uh, TJ English says that Moran was Al Capone's least favorite. Irishman and that his father was Irish and that his mother was Polish now if anybody knows for definite please do post below in the um, in the comments because I'd, I'd love to know if there's a um, a definitive source maybe if there's a, a bio or something of Moran that explains this but Moran was absolutely devastated by Dino Banyan's death and he blamed uh, Big Papa John Torrio who O'Banion had, uh, had kind of set up. And um, so he blamed Torio. He went after Torio. Torio said, I've had enough, I'm out. Torio handed his criminal empire over to Al Capone. And then the violence between Capone and Moran would escalate until Capone tried to put an end to it at the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. And Moran... His entire gang, his, his most of his gang was wiped out, but Moran himself survived because he slept in. He was meant to be there, but he stayed in, ba in bed late. And uh, one of Capone's scouts thought that he'd entered the building and gave the signal to, um, to start the attack. So even if Moran, if his father wasn't Irish, if we are desperate for, for people... I think Moran is the next person that I'm going to try and hire. I think it would be interesting to have Bugs Moran and uh, Frank McCurlin in the same gang together. But um, he's a bit cheaper than Natalie Warren. And um, like I said, we after that fight with, um, with Maggie Dyer, we really need numbers. We really need numbers when we're going into these things. So I'd say George is, uh, is our next potential hire. It's going to take a while. And sure, after all that, look where Frank decided to spawn himself. Way down there. I shot this guy in case Frank, like, started up here and he ran down in this direction. And we ended up in a, in a combat anyway. So we will put together our gang. The Scooby Gang increases even more. I don't think we can call it the Scooby Gang anymore now. Somebody... Oh, two lads just having a chat. Maybe they want to want to join our gang, who knows. So we have Frank, we have Nora, we have Cyril, there's Eddie, Jez, that other fool is back having a rest for himself. Clyde, 
he will... Do you know what? It's going to be a long time before he joins us. It's going to be halfway through February. So there you go. Frank McCurlin has finally joined our gang. I'm really excited to see what um, what we can do with him in the next episode. I didn't actually check. What's his hit points like? 81. Not too shabby. He's... he's He's a, a heftier, stronger, angrier version, more alcoholic version of Cyril. He's what Cyril could become if things go terribly, terribly wrong. As always, thank you very much for joining me on this episode. It's going to be combat heavy, combat focused from here on out. I'd say we're probably... We're not going to be able to fight uh, Saltus to the end because the Janas will... Um, We'll, we'll negotiate a, a truce with him, but uh, if we can find his storehouse, or his safe house, we'll go after him ourselves. If you've enjoyed the episode, please do leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't done so already to be kept up to date with new episodes, because it's entirely possible that if you don't, Frank McCurlin will go get crazy on your ass. Thank you for joining me on this episode, and I will talk to you on the next one.